in Sao Paulo City Center, 14th floor. Just the presence for a tiny second, it really fills up a little bit my heart during these hard times. Welcome to My Place on Earth, a series where I'll be meeting nature enthusiasts from around the world who want to share their amazing wildlife on their doorsteps. In this episode, we'll be meeting Caesar in Sao Paulo, Brazil, to talk to us all about the swallow-tailed hummingbird from his flat on the 14th floor. But first, let's watch a short film to find out how he became so interested in them. My story with hummingbirds started this year. Uh, since we moved here, the lockdown started and I couldn't get any friends here. So my idea was to bring the hummingbird feeder and it started to come. It's a very special species. It's called swallow-tailed hummingbird because of its tail. Here in Brazil, we call it Caesar's hummingbird because exactly uh, the shape of its tail looks like a Caesar. Initially, this one, it just looked like a black hummingbird, but then when the sunlight was shining on it on the right direction, I could see uh, the bright of the green feathers and the blue feathers. It, it's just so special. I can't wait for this rain to go. Uh, here in Brazil we call it the summer rain because it's usually very quick and once it's gone, uh, by the end of the day, I really hope I can see my friend again. And it gives me great pleasure to welcome Caesar coming to us from Sao Paulo in Brazil. Good morning, or should I say bom dia? <laughs> bom dia is great, good morning, it's fine too. A great morning, great morning. Very nice to talk to you, Hannah. What's the time where you are? We've made you get up quite early. <laughs> well, right now it is 6.50. It's 10 to 7 in the morning, but it's the best time to see hummingbirds, so hopefully we'll get them here. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers crossed. So listen, for some people that might not know that many facts about hummingbirds, can you tell us some of this about their special adaptations. Of course, well, their heart is so big. The heart is 20% of the weight of the body. In comparison, our heart is between half and 1%. Um, and they have to have this big heart because the metabolism is so fast. They need to pump a lot of blood. They spend a lot of energy during flight. You can see that. They can flap their wings up to 80 times in a second. It's just so fast. They're the only bird, aren't they, that can fly upwards, downwards, backwards, forwards, and that their wings are incredible. How are they able to do this? Exactly. Uh, well, there are many adaptations for that. For example, their shoulder joints allows the wings to rotate 180 degrees. It's different from any other birds. Uh, some people say that they don't flap their wings, they rotate their wings so they can go uh, forward and backward and as it's so fast they can even hover during flight. I was reading don't they they reach speeds of up to 35 miles per hour but when they're diving isn't it something like 59 miles per hour which is incredible when you think about the size of them they're just so fast. It's like a bullet, isn't it? And when we talk about their fighting, you see the dive flying. Now this is an incredible clip. I mean, how, how many hummingbirds were in that one spot there? This is a very special uh, place in the Atlantic forest that I visit every year, every year. And in this spot, there are many species of hummingbird. And at that time, maybe there was, there was 20 or 30 individuals. In one day, we can see more than a hundred. This is the ruby hummingbird. You see the, yeah, the really yeah. beautiful neck. Now, of course, you, would, you wouldn't assume that they're that aggressive or territorial, but because they have to eat so much every day, don't they? They get very, very protective and territorial over their, their food sources, which you would do, wouldn't you? If you, <laughs> they have to, isn't it like three times their own body weight every single day they have to consume? Yeah. They eat a lot, they eat a lot. They visit more than a thousand flowers in one day. We've heard that quite an incredible story. Was it you and your friends did this earlier on this year where a baby chick had fallen from the nest, but you 
helped it out by making a nest and then the mother came back. So tell us a little bit about this. Yeah, it was a very special day. So you see this little chick, it fell from the nest. Yeah, the chick stays like for three weeks in the nest before flying, but this one felt a bit before. So we had to help it. We, we got it. <laughs> you can see the, the blue feathers, it's just such a cute chick. It allowed us to get really close to it. So we built, yeah, we built a nest with grass. Uh, we got some dry grass from the ground, from the, from the, from the garden, and we built it. We, we left some sticks for it to, to balance. It, it just got so used to us. And we were just hoping so much for the mother to, to come back and start feeding it again. And there she is. Wow. She came so, back for so it. It worked. They're so attentive. They're actually like, they're great mothers. <laughs> she came back, she started feeding it again and visiting the, this chick many times during the day. And after a while, uh, this chick started flying, started flying, and, and today she's healthy. I, I say she, I think it's a she, I don't know. <laughs> she's healthy, <laughs> she's strong, and she's coming back to uh, my friend's house. He can still see her and he can identify her. So having these hummingbirds on your balcony, it really is nature on your doorstep. And what a treat. But I mean, it's been such a privilege, I guess, for you to have them there all the way through lockdown. I mean, what has it meant to you having them? Well, as a biologist, nature enthusiast, I always love to spend time with animals. So during these times here in Sao Paulo, city center, 14th floor, <laughs> lockdown times, quarantine going on, we were missing a few friends, like we can get human friends, but with the hummingbird feeder, we could get this hummingbird friend. And it's really important for us. For example, when we're here at the balcony reading or having lunch or during a meditation in the morning, which curiously is called humming meditation, it's just so special. It's just so special to get the hummingbird here. So it really fills up a little bit my heart during these hard times. Well, listen, thank you so much for joining us today. We really, really appreciate it. So thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Anna. It's, it's such a pleasure to talk to you. Hummingbirds on the balcony, it doesn't get much better than that, does it? But that's all we've got time for today. So join me next time where I'll be discovering another incredible part of the world with some amazing wildlife. And if you have a special place on earth, we really want to hear from you. And you can get in touch with us by commenting below. But I will see you next time. <laughs>